Hello my dear friends and welcome to my channel. Don't forget to make yourself a cup of tea, because today we have very interesting stories, and one of them is a story about an OP's mom who stole his baby, so the OP set up a trap to teach her a lesson. Subscribe if you haven't and I hope you'll enjoy it. So my grandma gave me this cookbook that has been passed down four generations in the family, making me the fifth to have it. She gave it to me when I got a house and started university. Ten years ago. My auntie was in the room when it was given to. My one cousin was jealous because she thought she deserved it as I didn't spend as much time with grandma living far away. My auntie is a terrible person. She's the most emotionally abusive person I've ever met and hates my mom for finding real love and remarrying after she got divorced. She expected my mom never to even date again like her. Well in December my grandma passed away on my birthday, she was my idol and role model, and she loved me, and I loved her so dearly. I was the last person she remembered before her Alzheimer's took over completely. Well, not even three days later I find out my auntie is looking for this book and demands it so she can make copies for the entire family. My oldest cousin thinks it's her birthday right, and my other girl cousin just had a baby, so she thinks she deserves it, so she can pass it down to her little girl, because I can't have kids, I'm having a hysterectomy this next month. I've told them all to back off. Grandma gave this to me 10 years ago, before she got sick, before I got sick, not that that matters. She gave it to me and I don't have to give it over to anyone for any reason. Not even roommates were allowed to touch this book. None of them are speaking to me now, and I'm really freaking mad. I'm so disappointed over their entitled feelings and throwing it at me that I can't have kids. I turned 27 the day my grandma died, I want kids, I just can't medically have them. No one is getting this book, she gave it to me, and she was the only person to ever accept me as family. I miss my grandma. I wish I understood the meaning of family, what's written sounds bizarre to me, and I want to feel those good feelings. Just to clarify, I'm hurt because they won't speak to me, they're speaking to everyone else instead of me. I haven't heard once from this auntie, but she said everything to my mom and hurt my mom so much more, and my mom had to relay it to me thinking I had stole the cookbook because my mom and I weren't talking when my grandma gave me the book 10 years ago. So I either never told her or it was so minor back then she forgot I had it. I don't have any respect for people who talk to others about a problem, but not to the person who is the only one that can rectify the problem. She shouldn't have involved my mom. Edit. Wow thank you so much for the love, I'm doing my best to reply to everyone, but my arthritis in my hands is laughing at me. The book is extremely delicate, so it can't be copied unless painstakingly by hand. This book came from her great-grandmother, my great-great-great-great-grandmother. From England on the boat with her to Canada. I've been working on making a copy of it digitally already for years, but it's massive. It has sections in it about meat cuts, canning, and even table settings, which way the knife blade should point. It also has every generation's writing in it as they scored recipes, I remember crying the first time I got to mark my first recipe as excellent. My auntie was in the room when my grandma gave it to me the first time. It's been 10 years and I've spoken less than a few sentences to that ouch canoe because of things she did to me when I lived with her for a short while. I'm not spending any time giving anything to her. She also didn't even ask me herself, but did it in a way that it demanded my mom make me give it back, after explaining to my mom she agreed with me. P.S. Update on decision. Venting and all the opinions that were well expressed has given me really good ideas on how to safely copy digitize the book and to preserve it when I can afford to. So when I find a store to do it, I'm going to have copies made for each of my cousins only for next year on a date, a birthday present from me to everyone in memory of the best person I had the honor of knowing. If her auntie wants a copy, she can borrow one of her kids versions to go copy. I'm not going out of my way for her, but I do really respect this gift and won't covet it and it will be lost to the family. I'm also going to leave out a few pages of the book that have the recipes that are my favorite and I'm known for them specifically because they are so amazing and I want just one thing to be mine and the grandma's. I think that's a more than reasonable compromise for all the work I'll be taking on to afford the process. Nothing crazy, like 5 pages only, the book is hundreds of pages long. When I saw that the aunt demanded the book and intended to make copies, my first thought was that she would never give it back, or it would be L-O-S-T dot, or she would use it to blackmail the family. You want a recipe? You have to do or give me this for it.
I had served in both the Regular Army and Special Operations Forces SOF, community for just over 10 years when an opportunity arose. It was an assignment in the middle of nowhere, but was near what I claimed to be my hometown, military brat. I would later find out that the job was horrible, but that has nothing to do with the story. We had been in small town, USA for a couple months. We were pretty much settled in. My wife and I were not exactly prepared mentally tough. Both sets of grandparents, specifically grandmas, had been away from their grandchildren since they were born. They were like flies at the house for the first couple months. It was finally starting to subside when this happened. I should mention that my mom is different. At least I think she is. I have always been the independent type and I rarely, if ever, call home. It's not because I don't love my parents or friends. I just don't feel the need to talk unless I really have something to say. I feel less of a need to call my mother. Generally speaking, don't expect a phone call from me. Why? She is scattered and typically has nothing useful to say. She likes to gossip, but she is the lady in the chain of gossipers that twists information and relays the wrong facts or tries to convince me of things. Typical phone calls from my mother are below. Ring. OP. Hello. Mom. Hey. What are you doing? OP. Nothing. Mom. Remember Jim Bob. OP. No. Mom. Yeah you do. You went to the pool with him once while you were six months old. When we lived in Germany. OP. Sorry mom. I don't remember Jim Bob. Mom. Yeah you do. OP. No. Mom. I don't remember him. Mom. Well he died. Thought you would want to know. Dear reader, this happens all the time. I have spoke on the phone with her no more than 20 times in the last decade and at least 10 people I don't know have died. Unrelated, but this is our last conversation. Ring. OP. Groggy. Hello. Mom. Hi. You sound sleepy. What are you doing? OP. Sleeping. Mom. Midday nap. OP. No. It's 2 in the morning. I am sleeping mom. First name, middle name, last name, what country are you in? OP, Lebanon. Mom, what are you doing there? OP, army work. Mom, I call to tell you that the random lady who used to watch you wrestle in high school passed away. Just thought you would want to know. Love you, bye. I'm bad, but she worries. I have been injured in combat three times. I figure I will just tell her when I get back most times. Back to small town USA. It's a Saturday. I am looking forward to having some time off. My wife was a swing shift ICU nurse at the time, and she was at work. I was home with the crib midget, two-year-old, and the miniature human, six-year-old. It was just the men at the house. I had woken up, feed the humans, and plop them down in the living room to watch Paw Patrol while I took a shower. I get the army essentials and return feeling refreshed from the shower. I conduct another inventory, but something is missing. Cake, crib midget two-year-old, is missing. He is a bipedal monster so I don't think much of it. I just ask Kelly, mini human six-year-old, where his brother is. I get the typical shoulder shrug response. Great. I now have 3,200 square feet of house to work with. I will systematically check the house either finding him in his room watching TV or exploring the cleaning products under the sink. The first sweep was unsuccessful. The second sweep was unsuccessful. I now enlist the help of Kelly to find the speed demon. We are now about 10 sweeps in and I am panicking. I've talked to my wife many times on the phone. We have had the lost conversations. Babe. I lost my car keys. Do you know where they are at? Babe. I lost my army thing. Do you know where it is? No husband ever wants to call their wife and say, Babe. You know that bipedal toddler we have? Yeah, that one. Do you know where it's at? I was there though. The house we lived in was old. The locks on some of the doors were different. Very old and some were complicated to open. Kate could not penetrate the front door. It just was not physically possible. This dude is Houdini, he was an escape artist. I was at my wit's end. I had to call my wife. The conversation went exactly how anyone would expect it to go. She was worried. She was hysterical. There was no way I would ever hold that number one dad coffee mug ever again. I did one last sweep under the direction of my wife, but it was now time to hand in my man parent card and call the police. 911. Ring. Lady. 911, what is your emergency? OP. 
I lost my son. Lady. Sir, you lost your child. OP. Yes, I took a shower and now my two-year-old is missing. I have checked the house and he is not here. Lady. What is your location, sir? OP. Address. Lady. What is your son wearing? OP. Thomas the tank engine shirt, blue, diaper. Lady. Where did you last see him? I have a large bay window. Very large. Something caught my eye. The reflection of sunlight that bounces of cars screams through the window way they pass, or park. A car had just parked in front of my house. It was my mother. Great. I am now about to have a mom conversation, and this is how it would play out in my head. In my head. Did not happen. OP. Hey mom. Mom. Hey. OP. Remember that toddler I had. Mom. Unlike me, yeah. OP. Well. I lost him. Bye. I am dreading the fact that I have 911 on the line, and I am about to tell my mother the dreaded news. Then I see it. What was it? Cake. My toddler. I kindly explained to 911 that I had found my human. Now I was only a bad father in the eyes of my wife and the entire dispatch center. I was seething with anger. I am a happy-go-lucky guy. Super calm. I simply don't stress out about much. This was not the case. I go charging out of the house. OP. What in the world do you think you are doing? Mom. Calm and shocked. What? I just went to the grocery store. OP. With my child. You took my child. Mom. Yeah. I stopped by and asked if the boys wanted to go. Cake did. OP. You feeking stole my kid, mom. Mom. Chuckles, no I didn't, I asked. Cake wanted to go. Kelly didn't, I told Kelly to tell you. Side note. Paw Patrol is like a trance for your kids. The goddamn rapture could happen around kids while watching cartoons, and they are unaware. God forbid the cable goes out though. Then the real chaos started. I am a warfighter with 14 combat deployments. I have said, daddy doesn't want to watch Barney for the 20th time today exactly once. There are some fights that just are not worth it. OP. You told Kelly. You told my six-year-old to relay a message to me. You thought that would work. Did you make that message contingent on a toy because he didn't know where his brother was? Mom. Well I told him. OP. Mom, you stole my kid. Then she freaking said it. Mom. I am grandma. I can take him. OP. Mom, you stole my kid. Mom. Oh, I just took him. OP. It's not called took. It's called kidnapping. Mom. Oh I didn't kidnap him. OP. You walked into the house. Asked two children if they wanted to go. Told one to relay a message to me. Why did you not ask her tell me? Mom. I screamed out. Thought you knew. I lost my crap. It went on and on with her trying to convince me of her point. I was not having it. I was beyond mad. I called my dad to get his opinion, and he just laughed. She was leaving anyways, I couldn't kick her out. It didn't even concern her mentally. She was oblivious to the gravity and severity of the situation. I was not done yet though. It just so happened that this specific weekend was a four-day weekend for me. I had the next two days off with the boys. My mom was unaware. She called on Sunday and asked what time I was dropping the boys off. Ding, light bulb moment. We had just adopted a new dog that was crate training. Let us capitalize on this. OP. Do you think you can watch the boys at the house so you can take Lola out? I don't want her in the cage all day. Mom. Sure. I can do that. Great. Now my mom would be at my house from around 6 o'clock till 1900 hours. Even better. My dad would be at work as well. D-Day, 6 o'clock. My mom arrives at the house. Still oblivious that I was still angry. No worries. I now have 12 hours to work out my frustration. I depart the house and promptly arrive at her house. Find the spare key and let myself in. I reorganize everything. I mean everything. It didn't take long to do the living room. I moved the couch. I moved the love seat. I moved my father's chair. The coffee table. The TV. Everything gets rearranged. I even move pictures from wall to wall and use sticky tack to hang them upside down or wonky. Moving into a new place can be a hassle during military moves. I love cooking. The kitchen and wood shop are my sanctuaries. It is such a pain in the butt to move into a new kitchen and get things where you want them. What's not a pain? 
reorganizing someone's kitchen. Everything from top to bottom was reorganized. The powder room was close to the kitchen, so I put plates under the sink in the powder room and toilet paper in the kitchen drawers. Again, everything was moved. I worked my way through the house ensuring that nothing was left untouched. The only room I didn't enter was the master bedroom. I am one of three siblings. They did it three times in my brain. I was not interested or mentally willing to screw with that room. I did however take great pride in her cricket room to ensure that I moved everything. My last act of screw you in the house was taking every single remote in the house. TV, DVR, cable, lights, you name it. If it was a remote, it was now in my possession. I then returned home at normal time. The changeover was typical. She asked me how my day was and let me tell you, it was a satisfying day of work for me. She acted as if the kidnapping event never happened. Well, she was about to be reminded that I didn't forget. It was time to crack a beer, play with the boys, and wait for that phone call. Ring. Mom. Remember, she is my mom, I love her, but she is different. Were you at the house today? OP. Brain. Is she serious? What? Mom. Did you stop by the house today? I think we were robbed. OP. Laughing. Robbed. Yeah. Robbers typically move your crap around, yes. I stopped by the house. Mom. You rearranged the living room? My dad just got home. During the conversation. I hear my dad talking as he enters the house, what the hell. Dad. Still overhearing him. Carla. What the hell did you do to the house? Mom. I didn't do it. OP did. She is oblivious still. Just looking at the living room. She laughs a bit and we conclude the conversation. Now I am baffled. Oh well. Ring. Mom. Where in the hell are my pots and pans? There is toilet paper under the kitchen sink. Toilet paper does not go there. God damn it OP. Dad in background, where is the remote Carla? I hooked everything back up. I just moved it. Things still worked. Dad, background. Carla. Remote. My mother is now walking through the house. She arrives in her arts and crafts cricket room. Mom. My full name, what the hell did you do? OP. I reorganized everything for you. Mom. Oh my god. Pause. Dad. Carla. Where is the remote for the TV? Mom. Where are the remotes? OP. Oh. I took them. I called out your name. I thought you heard me. She now explains to my father. Now there is hysterical laughter in the background. Mom. I am on my way over. She arrived at the house. I am willing to break bread and settle this. Under one condition. OP. All you have to say is you are sorry for kidnapping my child and you won't ever do it again. Mom. I didn't. OP. You want the remotes back. OP. I am sorry for kidnapping your kid and I will never do it again. Mom. I am sorry for kidnapping cake and I will never do it again. OP. Thank you. Mom. What time are you dropping the boys off tomorrow? OP. I think you should come here until you figure out where your pots and pans are. Mom. See you at 6. Love you. Bye. And that's that. Military life is different. Really different. I never thought in a million years I would live in my hometown and still be in the army. It was great at times. I was totally not expecting all the things that come with living in my hometown after being away for over a decade. The grandparents wanted to make up for years of not seeing them, and they did. There were obviously some learning struggles. Carla admitted defeat, and my dad eventually got his remotes back. Everybody won. She is still a bat crap crazy lady. I love her, but boy is she different. It's funny how you revenged and how that worked. It's really rare when such things work on people, and I'm glad that you and your family are fine. Well guys, that's it for today. If you end up enjoying this video please consider subscribing, and if you missed the last episode on the channel I'm gonna link it right here, the story is about a sick OP with his sweet service dog, and about a random woman who stole that dog for her kid. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video.